Jack is so good. What's that? Let's see, let's see. I got the phone ringing. Ring a ding ding. Hello? Hey, good evening, Ryan. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, not too much. This is Big Perm with Uncensored MMA. How the hell are you, man? Big Perm, that's awesome. I'm doing good, man. I'm uh, moving around a little bit tonight, getting a heavy sweat going, trying to get some weight off. Nice, man. Getting ready for that battle this coming Friday with uh, with Mr. Burchak. Yes, sir. Getting the last few corks done, trying to get my last little late, last two second things done, but uh, pretty much just, <clears throat> just you know, going over what I already know, reviewing, and, uh, you know, just trying to relax, get the weight off easy. Nice. Well, listen, before we get rolling any further, I want to bring in my co-host. I got with me uh, Dave the Butcher Clifford. Um, Dave, you there, brother? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, welcome to the show, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, you're well, welcome. Listen, Ryan. Just, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Dave. We just talked to your opponent, uh, Anthony, beforehand. Sounds like this is oh, yeah. a great fight. Uh, how do you, um, like you said, you're getting a little bit of weight out, but how'd your camp go? Man, it went great. Um, you know, this is definitely, I think, probably the one of the best camps I've been the most in shape for. And um, the reason I say that is because um, my weight cut's going to be a lot a lot easier this time. My natural weight was a lot lower than it's usually been, and I think it's just because I'm in such good shape right now. Well, that's really good to hear. As, yep. far as, uh, as far as what your base is, I mean, he was talking about your uh, caliber as a wrestling pedigree that you had wrestled in college and that you have a good, solid base. And he said that he was a pretty good wrestler, too, and that would counter some things. How much uh, did you work on stand-up, and did you put a little more time and effort into that because of that? Uh, you know, I don't know what that was. You guys still there? Yep, we're here. Yeah, buddy. we're there. Oh, sorry, it's because a little message popped up said you are now in the host queue. Oh nope, you're here with us, man. Okay, um, you know my training camp was um, uh, it's, it's kind of a regular camp. Believe it or not, I actually uh, changed up a little things, but stand up wasn't one of the ones that I changed up too too much. Um, I try to keep pretty much the same camp for for every fight. Um, and my my theory on that is I I don't change anything about me as a fighter for anybody else. Um, you know I'm a natural wrestler. Uh, I learned jiu-jitsu very easily, very quick. Um, you know, I can get in shape for cool. wrestling and jiu-jitsu very, very quick, very easy. And, um, you know, my stand-up, I'm always training stand-up. I train over here at Saxon Muay Thai, and this is an everyday gym for me. Well, not trying to, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, and I, I don't mean to, I just wanted to uh, bring up, because that's where we got a lot of our information about this fight was from the interview we just did. And he was talking about... Uh, uh, doing some cardio, extra cardio work, and being ready to to have a longer fight, perhaps, and not necessarily asking you that, but you know, having a wrestling background, you know, and I've just kind of started realizing this with talking to a lot of people, it comes with cardio, yeah, <laughs> you know, because when I was in high school twenty years ago, watching people get ready for wrestling was the most grueling thing that, you know, preparing for that must have been. Uh, an easy way, like you said, this weight cut's been easy, keeping your natural weight cut down. What's your cardio like? Man, my cardio is great. Like you said, um, you know, cardio comes with wrestling. So, um, you know, getting good cardio, it, 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 it's kind of an easy thing. You know, I, I've always thought that wrestlers were the best athletes all around. And um, the reason I say this is because wrestlers are used to running miles and miles at a time. Wrestlers are used to running – or it used to lift in heavy, heavy weights, you know what I mean? You have to be an all-around good athlete, not just in, like, one specific area. Like, runners, they just run. You know, boxers, they just box and, and other things. Um, weightlifters just lift weights. Wrestlers do everything, you know? So, um, you know, cardio comes with wrestling. You wrestling kids in school, you know? For sure, for Always. sure. Wrestlers are, are the bullies, you know what I mean? Like, I love being a wrestler. I love hanging out with the wrestling team, especially in college, you know what I mean? They're, they're the guys that walk around with their chest big and do whatever they want, but... Anyways, um, you know, cardio <laughs> comes with wrestling. Absolutely. And you know, but yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead, Perm. Oh, it's all good. I just uh, was going to kind of ask Ryan one of the same questions that I asked Anthony. 
Um, when it comes to doing these radio shows, um, you know, and you're only a week away from the fight, um, the mental the mental preparation for the fight, um, you know, does does doing the media work and, and all that stuff extra that you have to do to promote the fight? I mean, does is that how big of a distraction is that for you? You know, it, it's it's not really you know it's too difficult. I mean, to to talk on the phone with somebody about a fight is it's it's a pretty everyday thing. You know what I mean? I mean. I come to the sure. gym and I talk about the fight with my friends. You know, I, everywhere I go and I go to work, that's all people talk about is the fight. So doing an interview, it's just, it's, it's no different than just hanging out talking with somebody. And I don't really necessarily well, look at it as, as extra work. It's just, you know, we're talking about something that's about to happen that I've already talked about 20 other times right. already. So it's no different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Hold on, man. What do you do, uh, you know, because we know you're ready. We know you're prepared. You've, um, uh, you told us you've had the best camp so far, and this is a a big stage, a big fight. And uh, what do you do in your personal time? What do you do to get away? What do you do when you, uh, you know, just want to have some fun, kick back, and be yourself? You know, um, I, I genuinely enjoy fights. Um, I, I enjoy fighting. I, I got into this sport because, not because I was I was trying to do it to, to, to make money. I wasn't doing this because, you know, I was desperate and I had nowhere else to go. I got into this because I genuinely liked the sport of fighting. I liked boxing. I liked yeah. Muay Thai. I liked kickboxing. And so in my spare time, you know, a lot of it is is, is still fight-related. You know, I still like to box. I still like to hang out with boxers. I still like to, you know, go for runs. I really like lifting weights, believe it or not. I, I was a power lifter in high school, and I've always been very into bodybuilding and lifting weights. And so, and, you know, I like to lift weights in my spare time. Actually, this weekend, my my idea was to take the the next two weeks off of lifting weights, but I got so bored that I ended up going to the gym and, and just lifting weights and hanging out with my friends up there. Um, you know, I, I I have a girl. She's she's pregnant. She's four months pregnant. So a lot of my time is dedicated to her and, and looking forward to the baby right now, um, which is kind of a awesome. little bit little bit life changing, believe it or not. It's kind of changed up things a little bit, but you know, it, it's a blessing and I've been very very happy and and I mean my spare time it, it's it's pretty much fight related. I, I, I work at, um, one of the places I work at, um, you know, I sit at a computer all day sometimes and not all day, but for a few hours and I will sit there and watch clips over and over and over again of fights. And it's not that I'm studying or anything. I just love seeing the action and I'll get everybody around yeah. me involved. Like, Oh my God, come look at this. Come look at this. Come look at this. Whether it's a street <laughs> fight, whether it's a boxing fight, doesn't matter. I love fights in general. Well, Parks, well, you know what? being a fan you know part of a lot of guys i mean you know what's really cool is you know one of the things and it seems to be a theme tonight i mean we talked to a guy that was making his pro debut in our first uh we talked to ryan tabar in our first uh segment of the night and i told him the same thing i'm about to tell you i mean i interviewed hoist gracie a couple of weeks ago and i asked him what he does in his spare time and he says this is my spare time well when i'm home <laughs> i'm working he said so you're right on par with the elite with your answer, sir. Well, that's great. You know, I look at these other guys. Um, you know, I I try to surround myself with with guys that um that that are in doing the same thing that I do. And whether I'm I've reached their level or not, or whether I have the potential or not, like I hang out with Saxon, my trainer, and he brings in Thai guys all the time. And by the time that they end up going back to Thailand or leave or whatever they're here for, like I enjoy hanging out with them. You know what I mean? These guys are like my best friends and. Most of them are world champ fighters, you know what I mean? And a lot of people in the United States have never even heard of these guys because they're from a whole other side of the world. But, like, just, just being around these guys and, and surrounding yourself with these types of people kind of gives you gives you a little vibe and gives you an edge and, and makes your, your lifestyle a little bit different. And it makes you have respect for, for these world champions. And you see the drive and you see where you, what you need to do and you see where you need to be and how you need to focus. And then you also you, you learn to enjoy, you know, some of the simpler things in life when you're hanging out with these guys because, Sometimes they'll appreciate stuff that I look at like an everyday normal thing. You know what I mean? And, and it kind of it's, it's very life changing to be surrounded by these guys all the time. You know what I mean? And it's not even just that. I have a boxing coach who's two time world boxing champion, named Jesus Chavez. But I mean, he's the same way. These guys have something unique about them that separates them from everybody. And maybe that's the reason that these guys are world champions. Well, Ryan, just a minute ago you had mentioned that you know you truly love fights. You know, you're always watching fight clips, which you know, I'm I'm a junkie the same way, man. Um, you know, and you, you 
mentioned you started out wrestling and you loved doing that. Um, was there like one fight that you saw? Was there a clip or just a, a one fight in particular that you saw that said, you know, made you go, man, you know, MMA is what I want to do. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life as a career. Man, when I saw when when UFC was really starting to make its boom, I'd always been in the street fights when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Like I, I grew up wrestling. I started wrestling when I was ten years old. So, you know, the the competition and the edge of, of that individual sport and for a little kid fighting at that age is you know it's that's as close as you can get to that type of fight. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, you know, it's it's just something different that uh, that it brings to the table. Excuse me, one second. I'm sorry. I'm just walking past. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, no you know, it, it's something different that uh, wrestling it, it builds something into you that you you don't you don't see from from everybody else that that you you can't learn. You know what I mean? And when when guys like MMA fighters, specific MMA fighters, I'm going to point one out specifically here in a second. You learn something that that gives you that drive that nobody else in this entire world will will ever learn. And if you can transition that into your your daily life. And you can put that into your – even if you have an office job, you can put it into that. You're, you're going to be successful. And I think wrestling has, has a lot to do with that. And one of the guys that stood out in my mind and made me really want to be a fighter, believe it or not, was Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell was my hero when he was, when he was, when he, when he was making his big boom. I remember in high school I was wrestling, and I remember in the middle of class one time the teacher asked me, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, I want to be like Chuck Liddell. And he was like, oh, the octagon. This is when, this is when oh, they yeah. really starting to make it big, you know. And this is when Chuck mm-hmm. hadn't been knocked out. He'd been smashing everybody for years. And I was like, man, he's a wrestler. I'm going to be just like that guy. I'm going to be a wrestler with good-ass striking. I'm going to be a wrestler that's not afraid to get punched and not going to be afraid to punch anybody else. So that was my, my idea when I got into fighting is I wanted to be a, a, a really solid wrestler with, with stand-up that nobody wants to bang with. Well, and, you know, looking at your record and the way that you've achieved that record, uh, I think you're right on track, and you're definitely uh, keeping to your word, man. Doing what you say you're going to do. Um, you know, now that you're six and one, hoping to go seven and one after this fight with Anthony. Um, does the pressure? You know, is there any pressure now that your you know your fight's being broadcast on on Access TV? Um, is there any added extra pressure that comes along with that and being on such a big stage? There's got to be a little um, bit. You know, I guess there's a little bit, but it's not something that I like gets me. Um, you know. Champions never let the pressure get to them. The guys who can who can fight just like they train, those are the ones that, that are the best forever. Um, you know, I fought on Access TV. I fought two times last year. I fought once on HD Net last year. So I've, I've been in front of the cameras. I've, I've been in front of the stage. I've had the interviews before. This one's kind of had a lot more interviews than I thought it was going to have. But, um, you know, the fight <laughs> has a lot more hype on it. Yeah, this is a lot of interviews. Absolutely. I've done like a million in the past two weeks. It's, been, it's really cool, though. I, I love the interviews. I love the the attention, I love everything, you know, it's just, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm at the next level, you know, I'm, I'm getting there, I just, there's, I'm almost, almost, almost to the top of the game, but, you know, um, well, when you, for me, it's when not really going to be anything something. different, I'm just going to keep going, I'm going to keep, I'm going to, it's just my thing, this is just another day, it's just another fight, and I've been here before, and nothing else is going to change that. Well, when you really love something, I mean, I think all the added extras that come with it. You know, people like me or people like, uh, you know, people that just are fans, even though you're a fan too, people that are fans don't understand how <clears throat> how much you actually have to do. And, you know, when the way you talk, it sounds, and also your opponent, to be honest, um, you guys, it enhances what you're doing. If anything, it's not necessarily pressure that it adds, but it adds almost ability. It adds drive. I mean, is, is that true? Oh, for sure, for sure, uh, it adds drive, you know, um, you don't want to talk this big game and then go in there and end up being out of shape, but I mean, you know, the attention is good, it's good that Anthony and I are, we're, we're on the same page, as much shit as, as we talk to each other and as much as we, we hate each other publicly, um, you know, I, I do respect him as a person, he he did get to his, his, his 9 and one for a reason, he signed with MSP for a reason, so you know, I have to respect that in a way, but in another way, like, I, I don't respect him for signing the contract and thinking he could fight me, and I'm going to make him pay for that. And um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, when you when you get so much attention and when you when you you're doing this this type of thing, it makes you much more valuable as a fighter. Um, you know, talking trash gets you places, and talking trash gets you money, and it gets you fame. Whether it's good trash or whether it's bad attention, good attention or anything, attention is good attention, and that's going to make your value go up 
even higher and higher and higher as a fighter, you know, as as in sponsors, as in everything. People people love the attention. People love the guys that you know that, what's uh, funny? that talk a lot. What's funny about that is, bro, I just I, I just took on a little bit of extra work as a commentator, right? And I got to work for an uncensored broadcast, right? So people paid uh-huh. to hear this and I worked with another guy. Man, you are right about that. It's uh when you start putting yourself out there, you know, you 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 have to back it up, you know. So I got a lot of flack for, you know, because we were on censor. We were allowed to say anything we want. So when guys came in in basketball shorts, we made note of it and said, look, man, you know, because it was an amateur. It was fun. It was an amateur event, you know, and there was, uh, you know, a little That's bit of flack about it. You know, there, there was a proposal on it, like two different people proposed, and someone in the background actually made a comment, and it got misconstrued. You know, so you're right about that. You know, the extra attention, um, it, it enhances – what I do, you know, it made me feel more alive to be, to get some attention. And like you said, it was somewhat negative, but I was able to come out and explain myself and actually made a few friends and fans out of the deal. Oh, exactly. Exactly. You know, um, like I said, the, the attention is good attention. It, it, no matter how you look at it, when, when, when there's, there's guys that are notorious for being infamous because they're the guys who, who will run their mouth. Trust me. I, I, I'm Jail. sure you guys know this too. There's guys, yeah, exactly. Look where he got. He got himself, you know, three title shots in a row almost, and it, because he runs his mouth and because he, he's got that attention. And I guarantee you, his value and his purse as a fighter and his purse and sponsor doubled or tripled. I guarantee you, they went up because, like, no matter what, he's running his mouth and he's saying things that they want to hear, and he's getting the attention, whether like his opponent or whether people love him or hate him. Like, his his value has gone way up. Whether you know, you can be his fan or you can't be his fan, but you want to hear what he's got to say. And, and, you know, that's, that's not even just well, in, in MMA. It's happened for years ultimate, and years in boxing. Yeah, after the Ultimate Fighter show, when I watched how great of a coach he was and how much he cared about the athletes that were on his team, he, you know, I, I was rooting for him against John Jones, man. I mean, so at the same time that he's infamous and saying rotten-ass shit, I guess, and, you know, I didn't really dig him insulting Brazil. That was kind of too much, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't, even selling a fight, that's bullshit. But other than, you know, he didn't perform either too much, but <laughs> at the same time, I was rooting for him because of the fact that I got to see that beyond all the talking that he does and all the things that he has to say and how he always, you know, he's a lot like Pavlich, bro. He'll say, well, I'm the best thing going today. <laughs> That's true. He is just like Pavel. I haven't even thought about that. He's <laughs> <laughs> well, a character, man. Bad way. I love oh, that guy. He's funny, man. Myself, I, I got respect for good microphone masters. <laughs> exactly, exactly. See, it gets you interviews. It gets you attention, you know. That's Why right not? There. Look at Muhammad Ali yeah. was the greatest guy of all time at talking trash. He got any fight that he wanted his entire career. He got every fight that he got to choose. Because he was the guy that people wanted to watch fight, and he was the guy that fighters wanted to punch in the face. Yeah, all time. Exactly. We, when we had when we had Mark on the show, um, I mean, I'd said this before. He set me on fire. Um, that guy is a ball of energy, and he, uh, you know, watching the social media through Facebook and Twitter, um, the guy is is a marketing genius, and he's he's great at, uh, at yeah at putting the organization out there, but also the fighters. And, and in talking with the fighters, you know, every maximum fighting championship fighter that I've talked to um, has – there's just nothing negative to say, and uh, yeah, I can't really find anything negative anywhere. Um, <laughs> nope. But anyway, this fight, we got just a couple minutes left. I just okay. want to get back to the fight between you and Burchak coming up this Friday. Um, everybody can catch the fights on AXS TV. Um, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Anthony. Um have you seen any holes in his game? Is there any anything you can tell us about without giving away too much? Uh, any holes uh, that you're able to exploit? Man, I tell you the truth, I've seen a lot of holes. Uh, he's got some videos online, and um, you know, I, I posted it on Twitter, and this may have been the the beginning of the shit talking that we had, but I posted a, his highlight reel on Twitter, and I said, "This is what chumps call a highlight." I truly believe it because, and the reason the reason I watched that shit, and right after I watched it, I was like, "Man, this guy's a freaking chump." I was like, how the hell did he even get in here? Like, he's a chump. And, and um, you know, I'm going to expose it. I, I can tell you one thing. I'll give one hole. He does not know how to throw a punch. He is not. I can tell by watching his videos. Nobody, he, nobody has taught him 
correct boxing and how to throw a correct punch. I, I can see it just by where he keeps his weight. I can see by how he moves. Even on the ground, I can see that his his, his jiu-jitsu is very sloppy. His wrestling is very sloppy. He seems like one of these guys who just brawls and brawls and brawls to a takedown. And, um, you know, it's worked for him. I can't I can't take too much away from him because it's worked for him. He's 9-1. and one. But uh, it's not going to work against me. Love the answer, man. Sweet. Well, I'm trying to get to my I'm trying to get to my switchboard here. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Where did that go? I'm looking for a boxing bell because we're running up on time here. There it is. Sorry. Oh yeah. Well, that tells that boxing bell tells us that we've got just a few minutes left in the end. Uh, before I uh, turn it over to Perm and let him uh, find out who how to get a hold of you and let you talk about your sponsors and everything. Um, I got a fun question for you. Okay. And that is, if there were tag team MMA, who would you pick as a partner? And this this could be open weight. Who would you pick as a partner, and who would you guys want to face? Man, that is a good question. Uh, tag team fighting. Uh, that's that's pretty interesting. Can you jump Hell people? Yeah. Can one hold one down and punch the other one? Can you Hell do that, yeah, man? Yeah. I need a, I need a, somebody tall. I gotta think, cause I'm I'm not very tall. So we have to we fight somebody tall. He's got the tall guy. Uh, <laughs> let's go. I would pick John Jones, cause I think he would still ha- crush half the guys in the heavyweight division. Even if they get somebody bigger than him, I think he would smash them. And then let's say I'm gonna pick a 125er to go against, and I'll just pick John Dodson, cause people talk about John Dodson to me all the time. So let's pick John Dodson, <laughs> and we'll face. Uh, We'll face Chael again. So me and John Jones versus John Dodson and Chael. <laughs> oh, yes. You shoot in for the takedown, and John Jones just beats the tar out of him. Dude, he can do whatever the hell he wants. He can, he can, he can stand up. He can, he can hold him down. I don't care. But he, he can do whatever he wants with his long-ass arms. <laughs> oh, hell yes. Well, listen, um, we've just got a few minutes, you know, maybe about a minute left with you, Ryan. Um, this last little bit of time, I just wanted to give you the air so that you could thank any sponsors and, you know, of course, tell our listeners how they uh, can get in contact and uh, follow along. Okay, cool. Uh, first, I want to thank God for, for everything, for putting me here, for giving me this opportunity, giving me the MSG contract, opening the doors when I was desperate and I really needed something. Uh, thank you for my for my baby, my baby girl. I just found out it was a girl. Thank you so much, God. It, it's just a huge blessing and everything I could have ever asked for. Um, i got to thank my agent, Oren, KO Reps, uh, of course, my trainer, my second father, Saxon Jangiera, uh, thank Chris Brennan, thank uh, Jesus Chavez, thank all my guys from Saxons. You guys are my brothers. I love you guys to death. Um, I got to thank uh, Lockout Supplements for sure. Uh, Bangkok Hard, which is my new sponsor. Everybody check out Bangkok Hard. It's an awesome brand. Um, and, you know, uh, I got to thank my mom. I got to wish her happy Mother's Day, even though it's next weekend. But I love you, Mom, and, and thank everybody. Thank you guys for everything. I don't know if Perm was there or not, so I'll close it out and say thank you very much for taking the time. We'll be tuning in on AXS TV. My boy Michael Chavello will be calling that fight. So I look forward to uh, seeing you and uh, Anthony fight, and congratulations on your baby girl. My my little Stella turns one tomorrow. Ah, uh, congrats. That's awesome. I'm so excited to have a little girl, believe it or not. Most fighters would die and love to have a little boy, but I was dreaming of a little girl. I was so happy. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be great, man. I really wish you the best of luck and good luck on your fight now. Business first, and uh, you enjoy yourself and don't forget to have fun, man. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate the interview. Hey, have Ryan. You know, for for me, the butcher and our producer Chris again, just want to say thank you, sir. And uh, you take care and have yourself a great evening. Thank you, guys. Make sure you watch the fights. Don't forget it. next Friday live on Access TV. Access TV co-main event. Can't wait. First round fight. You heard it right here. Ryan's calling it a first-round fight. Good luck, brother. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bye-bye.